Hey, this is Carlton. Put me in, coach. I uh, would like to cover a few things. Uh, I'm making this post, or this video is going to go on pondloss.com. I'm a little upset this morning. I uh, appreciate a friend of mine sharing my uh, research about how J.A. Moore accepted $1,000 from Alex Myrtle in 2020. And then, it, and he still has not returned the money, even after we found out that Alex Murdahl, you know, pleaded guilty to stealing millions of dollars. The ethical thing to do would either to be get to give that thousand dollars back to the prosecutor to reimburse the victims, or donate one thousand dollars per the SC Ethics Commission if you receive money that you're not supposed to receive as a candidate, or that's what you believe, then you give it to the Children's Fund uh, in South Carolina. And I don't believe J.A.'s done either one of those, given $1,000 to the Children's Fund or given $1,000 to the victims of uh, Alex Myrtle. So I shared that on uh, nomorejamore.com. We have that. Uh, it's a link on nomorejamore.com. It's called Dirty Money. Uh, and more than likely that that $1,000 is dirty money and it should be returned. But, of course, we don't have any evidence that J.A. Moore has returned it. So the next thing, uh, a friend of mine shared that post and actually gave me credit by posting no more jamore.com. And then Latricia shared that post but did not give me credit. And this is the second time I've warned her, telling her, you know, she can't use my material. And it's a it's copyrighted. It's on my one of my web pages and at the bottom it's very clear about the copyright. So that's copyright infringement. One issue that I have with Latricia um, in this campaign is if you cannot come up with your own slogans or your own uh, research, you know, I don't believe Latricia is a leader. She's asking for you to vote for her to be a leader. I don't think she's a leader, and I'll tell you why. First of all, uh, she's using my material that I'm researching to point out the contrast between J.A. Moore and myself. And she's using that and posting it on her Facebook page and not giving me credit for it. She either needs to put votecarltonwalker.com on there or she needs to put, you know, you know, created by Carlton Walker for SE House District 15. So that's her second warning. Another thing, uh, as you can see, my slogan is put me in, coach, because the slogan I have is if you vote for me and if you're not even in the district, or you're in the district, or you're not even in the state, but you have an issue with the state government, and you contact me, you are the coach, I'm the uh, the player. So, I'm in this game for you guys. Latricia's slogan, Faith, Family, and Freedom, that, I believe, she got that from the Dorchester County Republican Party. Their annual dinner is called the Faith, Family, and Freedom Dinner. I attended it. Uh, this past year, 2023, I was invited to sit at presidential candidates Vivek's table, or right next to it, and I, I can show you a picture. Uh, I was at the Faith, Family, and Freedom dinner for Dorchester County, but yet Latricia is using on her website Faith, Family, and Freedom. Here's my belief. Why she is a follower and not a leader, because... Based on her actions, um, I believe if she becomes the nominee, she will not be coming up with new, any new creative ideas like Put Me In Coach or No More JA More dot com or any of the other stuff that I'm uh, advocating for to change District 15. I think she would be the type of candidate that would follow whatever you know the leadership tells her to do. Now there are times when you are given. Uh, something to do or you're told to do something by an authority figure um, the goal of creating laws is to protect the public correct okay protect the public or when I was in the Navy uh, there was two Somalian boys two African Somalian boys that rode their boat out to our ship you see this big ship? They rode, I was on the flight deck back here, 
and you see it's about a 60 foot drop to the water. We were anchored off the coast of Somalia. So what happened is these two little boys, they rode this homemade boat a mile off the coast. We were anchored one mile off the coast. So I'm on the flight deck in the back and I see this little boat coming towards our ship. And I was with a shipmate, another blue shirt, and I said, hey man, let's go in the hangar bay and see what that is. Right there's the hangar bay and there's a door, uh, it drops down to about 40 feet off the uh, water. So we went in the hangar bay, but we we're on this side because the little boat came around to this side. And we went down and there's two little boys and they're waving and they're pointing at their mouths and they were hungry. And the only thing they had on were a pair of shorts. It looked like they had had those shorts on their entire life. The kids were probably 12 and 14 and they had a little bucket and they kept, they kept belling water out of the bucket. And I told my shipmate, I said, hey, let's go to the galley and get him something to eat. Well, standing next to us, by the way, I was an E3, was a Marine gunny sergeant who's an E7, which he's in the Marine Corps. I'm in the Navy, but because he's a department of the Navy, I still have to listen to him. And he said, don't give those two S heads anything. If you want to give them something, give them a bar of soap so they can wash their stinky butts. But he didn't say the word butt. And I looked at this Marine gunny sergeant, and I was like, wow, man, you're really that uh, mad about you've been ashore fighting with the Somalians. And my buddy, the other uh, airman, he decided, blue shirt, he decided to go back up on the flight deck before Chief found out we weren't up there. Me, I had a decision in my life to make. Do I listen to the gunny sergeant and watch these two little kids continue to want something to eat and I can only imagine that morning that they saw our warships sitting off the coast and they were like hey man I'm hungry you hungry yeah what if we row this little boat out to that warship and ask for something to eat yeah let's do that that was probably what happened that morning I went to the ship's ATM machine I bought two co or bought got five dollars out I bought two cokes two honey buns and two snicker bars and I walked back into the hangar bay and I had the food stuck up under my flight vest and my st stomach sucked in and the cokes were freezing my stomach and I see the marine gunny sergeant and so I walk a hundred yards up to the center of the ship and out to the lifeboats and I yell back to the two Somalian boys hey come here I went hey and I waved them and they row their little boat up under me and um I dropped the two Cokes, the two Honey Buns, and the two Snicker Bars, and the last Snicker I missed, and the Snicker fell like 10 feet away from their boat. Little boy dives into the Indian Ocean, and by the way, there are sharks in that ocean, and he swims over, he grabs the Snicker Bar, he swims back, hands it to his buddy, and his buddy grabs him by his shorts and pulls him in. And they started waving up at me, and thank you. And you would have thought they'd each get a Coke, each get a Honey Bun, and each get a Snicker Bar. That's not how they split it. They opened one of the Honey Buns, and they ripped it in half, and they shared it. And they were waving up at me in thanks. And I had a tear run down my face at that moment. Because no matter how bad those two little African boys want to be somebody, they can't because of where they live in this third world country with these warlords fighting with each other. You can't see it, but it was white puffy clouds, crystal sky... And I said to myself, or actually I said this to God, I said, God, I don't know how, but one day I'm going to make a difference. And it is time for me to make a difference in District 15. Just like I decided, you know, to risk being restricted to the ship for two months, a half a month's pay taken away for two months if I was caught feeding those two Somalian boys because that gunny sergeant gave a order not to give them anything. About that time. I hear, hey, and I'm like, oh, crap, dude, I'm busted. I'm going to go to the brig and captain's mast. And I look down at the boys, and they were looking forward to the front of the ship up here and not back where the gunny is. And I look out, and I, and I look forward, and there is a Marine private that was standing next to his gunny. He went through the ship's kitchen and grabbed two brand new loaves of bread, went up to the front of the ship in the bow outside the catwalk on the weight room side, and he dropped those two kids two brand new loaves of bread. 
He also disobeyed his gunning sergeant to feed those two African Somalian boys. About that time, as soon as he dropped it, he sees me, he pops a salute, I pop a salute back to him, and we haul butt. And that is the type of leadership. And Latricia Pond said, you don't have to be a veteran to run for District 15. Are you kidding me? Who do you want representing you if you're a veteran? A veteran that served in Somalia and has actions like that or someone that doesn't. So that's all I'm going to have to say about leadership qualities for right now. But check out uh, pondloss.com. Also check out nomorejamore.com. And then definitely go to votecarltonwalker.com because you will learn more about me than any other candidate that's in this race. And I firmly believe I'm the most qualified for this position as a fourth generation veteran who served in Somalia. I'm a SLED certified concealed weapons instructor, real estate broker in charge, Cutco Hall of Fame in 2007. That's what that diamond ring on my finger is with 11 diamonds. I'm an SC District 15 native. That's me eating watermelon in District 15 and 74. And I'm also a contractor. So go out and vote on June 11th and November 5th, 2024 for Carlton Walker and one of the nicknames people call me is C-Dub. Let's put C-Dub in office. How about that? See ya.